Hello, brothers and sisters. Today is April 23rd, the year of our Lord, 2022. And welcome to Dwight's Perspective, where we discuss things from a young earth creationist Christian worldview. And today we're going back to the Harper's Weekly Book of Newspapers. This particular article is dated January 17th, 1874. And the title of it is Holiday Greens. It goes like this. The Christmas tree of the Germans is gradually superseding the old English custom of hanging the stocking by the fireplace for the reception of the present supposed by a pleasant fiction to be brought down the chimney by Santa Claus. In Germany, and frequently in this country, the ceremony of distributing the presents takes place on Christmas Eve. The tree is arranged by the senior members of the family in the parlor, and early in the evening the children are assembled in an adjoining apartment. At a given signal, the parlor door is thrown open and the young folks rush in, eager to behold the splendid and attractive sight. There, on a table in the center of the room, stands the Christmas tree, every branch glittering with little lighted wax tapers, while all sorts of gifts and ornaments are suspended from the branches. While the larger presents lie on the table, each labeled with the name of the recipient, and perhaps bearing a bit a verse appropriate to the occasion. The Christmas tree appears to be a very ancient custom in Germany and is probably a remnant of the splendid and fanciful holiday pa pageants of the Middle Ages. Within the last 20 years, it has become very popular in this country, which would have been since 1850s. Although the good old English legend of the beneficent Santa Claus coming down the chimney with his pack of presents to distribute in the stockings hung by the ample fireplace has many attractions not possessed by the more glittering spectacle of the Christmas tree. Those who look back to the Christmas mornings of 30 or 40 years ago, which would have been the 1830s, and remember the eager delight with which they used to steal out of bed in the gray dawn to take down the stockings and scramble back to examine them at leisure before dressing. Cannot but regret that the pleasant old story should die out of the imagination of the children of the present day. But with the modern improvements of our houses in the manner matter of warming, the legend of Santa Claus becomes an absurdity, even to children. How could the jolly old fellow squeeze through a furnace register or the chinks of a kitchen range? We shall have to reconcile ourselves to the naturalization of the German festival and allow Santa Claus and the stockings to become a legend of the past. Holiday greens are not confined to Christmas. The tree, stripped of the presents, but still bearing its pretty ornaments, gener generally remains untouched until after New Year's, and the wreaths of evergreens in the window, and the trimming of the parlors and dining room are allowed to hang until they begin to strew the carpet with a litter of dried leaves. Our illustration on page 52 shows an evening scene at Washington Market just before the holidays where Christmas trees, wreaths, and other green decorations are exposed for sale. Okay, let's back it up and I'll show you guys the picture they're talking about here. This is the picture which I've showed this to you guys before. It's supposed to be New York, Christmas time. It says Holiday Greens, a scene in Washington Market, New York. 
Okay. So I guess we'll go over here to the Bible and see what we can find that might pertain to what we just read. This is Jeremiah chapter 10, verses 1 through 4. Learn not the way of the heathen. Hear ye the word which the Lord speaketh unto you, O house of Israel. Thus saith the Lord, Learn not the way of the heathen. Be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the, custom of the peop for the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workman with an axe, with the axe. They deck it with silver and with gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers that it move not. This is another verse that pertains to trees. This is Deuteronomy chapter 16, verse 21. Thou shalt not plant thee a grove of any trees near unto the altar of the Lord thy God, which thou shalt make thee. Okay, so I guess the question is, is the Christmas tree an idol? Well, let's go over here. This is my Bible dictionary, Nelson's Illustrated Bible Dictionary. Let's see what it says an idol, an idolatry is. Idol. This is the highlighted part, I think, pertains to what we're talking about. Perhaps the best definition of an idol is something we ourselves make into a god. It does not have to be a statue or a tree. It can be anything that stands between us and and God or something we substitute for God. Everybody knows, or most people do anyway, the Christmas holiday has pagan roots. The word Christmas comes from Christ Mass, which means a gathering for Christ. Let's we're looking into the idolatry part now. Let me read what it says about idolatry. In the New Testament period, the term idolatry began to be used as an intellectual concept. Idolatry became not bowing down before a statue, but the replacement of God in the mind of the worshiper. Colossians 3.5 points in this direction. Put to death covetedness, which is idolatry. See also Ephesians 5.5. 5. At this point, the modern believer must understand the vicious nature of idolatry. While we, may, while we may not make or bow down to a statue, we must be constantly on guard that we let nothing come between us and God. As soon as anything does, that thing is an idol. In addition to material objects such as houses, land, and cars, idols can be popular heroes or those whom we love. Objects of worship can even include things like fame, reputation, hobbies, pride, and deeds done in the name of the Lord. Idolatry is a dangerous and deceitful sin. No wonder prophets preached against it so often and so strongly. Find. This is the temple of Artemis Sardis, a pagan shrine. It doesn't really have anything to do with what I'm, what I'm talking about, but I like to show you guys pictures. So, one has to ask themselves, is the Christmas tree an idol? Does it substitute for Christ? 
The whole root of the holiday concerning Santa and the tree involves lying. Don't forget that. And lying to children at that. Christmas is supposed to be Jesus' birthday, which is debatable, historically speaking. But for the sake of argument, let's assume it is. Have you ever noticed how Jesus' birthday is the only birthday where everyone else gets a gift and not the one whose birthday it is? I think probably the Christmas now is nothing like what it was intended to be. I think it's funny that it started off with uh, stockings, and mild amount of gifts, and then they replaced it with a Christmas tree. By the way, making it more pagan and at the same time making it more commercial. because You have much more room for gifts under a tree and on tables next to a tree than uh, inside a sock, right? But, uh, but yeah, Christ doesn't get a gift on his birthday. Well, how about giving yourself to Christ for his birthday? It's the only thing he wants, and it doesn't cost a dime. And you don't have to wait till Christmas for it. If you haven't done it yet, guys, we're running out of time. You don't have long to make the choice. Choose Christ today. That's all I have for you guys today. Stay tuned. I got some good videos coming. Until next time, God bless.